All right, so welcome to LumaFusion. We're gonna have some fun with LumaFusion. So what I'm gonna show you here is just sort of a basic overview on putting together a, a movie using some video files that I've already got on my iPad here, but I'll kind of talk you through how you can import some stuff from other places as well. Cool, so let's jump into LumaFusion, and I'm gonna just tap on the app right over here and open it up, and let's see where we're at. So it looks like we're at the projects screen and when you're at this screen the bottom left corner is going to with that little plus in the circle is going to be how we can create a new project so I'm going to tap on that right there and it gives us the option to come up with a name so let's name it uh, my Luma Fusion tutorial fun video thing and we can change to a different frame rate maybe we want to do 24 frames or something else I'm going to stick with 30 so as far as aspect ratio goes, you have a bunch of different ones you can choose from, but I would just say leave it on 16 by nine. Um, you know, the only other one you might want to use is four by three, but that's an older style. It's kind of more the square style of video. So I would say just leave it at 16 by nine because that's what's most compatible and that's what a lot of YouTube videos are and everything. And if that's what you're going for, that's all you need to, uh, to leave it on. So let's leave it at 16 by nine. And now I'm gonna hit this create project button on the bottom right. So cool, here we are in our project and at the very bottom we've got a timeline that we can use and LumaFusion gives us the option of having up to three video tracks and three audio tracks running simultaneously. So we could actually build something pretty involved, which is pretty neat. So um, LumaFusion gives you the option to import video from a lot of different places. You can pull things in from your built-in photos uh, on your iPad or iPhone, or you can pull things in from Dropbox Google Drive, uh, Microsoft OneDrive, and Box.net, I believe it is, uh, or Box.com. But if we go to the three dots in the upper left qu sort of quadrant where it says Photos, and I'm sorry, I don't have a way to point to it here, but uh, if you look in the upper left corner where it says Photos, there's three little dots there. If we click those, this is gonna show us the option for importing media. If we click on Import, this will actually take us to our different sources that are available. So we have Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, and OneDrive. And each time you, uh, when you want to connect a service to it, like let's say you want to add your, say, Google Drive or your OneDrive, when you tap on it, it'll actually take you through the process of connecting to it. So that part is pretty self-explanatory. So first thing we're going to do is start out with the Photos app. And you can also change from different um, sources by going to the upper left corner. Tapping on that will give you the option of pulling in content from photos, iTunes, uh, and then anything you've previously imported, as well as adding titles or transitions. So that's handy as well. We're gonna go with photos, and I'm gonna go into my albums, because I've created an album from a little bit ago, which has some video files that we're going to play with. Now what's really nice about this is it actually gives you the uh, option to pull down stuff that's in iCloud. So some of these video files are on my iPad and some of them are in iCloud. If you look at uh, this very last one here, the second row, second one in, at 16 second video clip, it actually has that little cloud icon. If I tap on it, it'll download it to LumaFusion to allow me to edit it, which is pretty nice. Now I don't have to wait for it, I can actually tap on something else that's already here and work on it. So when I tap on that one, for example, this shows some kind of water footage uh, from uh, the Bahamas and uh, just above, just below the actual viewer here, this blue area, if I tap on this, it actually lets me scrub what area I want to select for the for the what I'm going to use. So right now I've got, oops, that's the one I finished downloading. Let me tap that. So we'll go back to our water footage. And if I just start playing it from the beginning, I can see that, you know, kind of preparing the pan or preparing the shot and then I start kind of my little pan right there looking at the ship and now looking back by the water. So I know that I only want to use a small part of this. So maybe I'm going to use my little uh, scrubber down here and I'm going to go back and forth to try to find the part where I want to come in and start my use of this clip. So maybe kind of right about here, I'm going to press this left bracket to define that as my in point or where I'm going to start my use of this uh, clip here. And let's play it for a little bit, just kind of see what we get. And that's probably enough. I don't need to see senior frogs there or anything. So we're just going to go back and maybe stop it right about there. Let's press the right bracket. That's going to be our out point. And now I can either just tap and drag this right down to my timeline, 
or I can press the little uh, arrow in the bottom left corner to add that to my timeline, just sort of drop it right on in. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's pick another video file. Let's actually see what this first one is. Looks like it's kind of the similar shot here. Kind of panning the other way a little bit, back and forth. All right, so let's say maybe I want to take the very beginning of that. So I'm just going to, maybe I'll start right at the beginning, which it's already set to. And then maybe just take a few seconds of that as I pan a little bit to the right. Stop about there, and then we're going to hit that right bracket because that's all we need. And I'll press the arrow to bring it right down. So now we've got two clips here. Let's actually take a look and see what our little video project is looking like so far from the middle. Cool. Now let's say I want to make a nice transition to go smoothly between these two uh, clips here. I can put my, I have to put my playhead, which the playhead stays, uh, stays put in the middle and then the project kind of scrolls past it. So we need to scroll to put the playhead right in between the two clips here. And I'm just using that by kind of dragging my finger a little back and forth on the bottom here. I'm going to put this right in the middle, put the playhead right in the middle of these two clips and press the plus button on the bottom right corner. That's going to give me the option to add a transition. So once I do that, it sort of throws a cross dissolve in there for me. And let's see how that looks. Real nice. Now, the one thing you want to be careful of is if, because if you notice when I played this back, it jumps just a little bit when it starts. That's going to happen if you have a clip that starts right at the very beginning. So if you noticed, I brought the this second clip here with the, with the ship. I brought that in right at the very beginning of it. You want to try to add a little bit of space in the beginning and at the end for editing purposes. So for example, if you're going to say you're recording video of somebody talking, you want to press record on your camera and then wait about a second or two and then you can kind of point to them or say action uh, and they'll start doing what they're doing. When they're finished, just wait a minute, wait a few seconds, then stop recording. Uh, or if you're the one doing it, you know, give yourself that little bit of lead time in the beginning and that tail time at the end. So when you do transitions and things like this, you can keep things nice and smooth. So to sort of fix that, let's click on this transition right here. We're going to take it out. We're going to delete it with a little trash can on the bottom left here. And I'm going to select this video and just press and hold and drag this in a little bit. I'm going to bring in, you know, maybe a couple of seconds here, just so that way we're not right at the very beginning. And now I'm going to try adding that transition again. And let's take a look and see if that's any smoother. Much better. So it's a lot nicer. So now we've got two video clips. That's looking nice. Let's add some sound to this. Now, LumaFusion comes with some royalty-free music, which is pretty cool. So in the upper left corner, where we have the little photos flower there, we're going to tap that and go down to royalty-free music. So I tap on this right here, and we've got a whole bunch of different categories. Now, the way that I am doing this video, I'm not going to be able to hear what this sounds like. I'm just going to sort of pick one at random here. Uh, I'm going to go to Happy Energy, and uh, let's try Uplifting Upbeat Acoustic. So I'm going to tap on that, and just like it was a video, it actually gives us our audio file on the right-hand side. I'm going to just tap and hold and drag it on down right below the video file. Now, as you can tell, we've got more audio than we do video in this particular project. So to sort of clean that up, and you can do this with even a video file as well, just scroll to the part where you want to sort of make an edit, and then come down to your little scissors, which will be on your bottom right corner in this, uh, in this window. Tap on that, it creates a cut, and then you can tap on your trash can on the bottom left and get rid of that. So now we've got audio that lines up here. I'm just cleaning that up a little. Audio lines up with the end of our video. And then to sort of make things a little more polished, I'm gonna tap on the little levels uh, or meters kind of button in the left side over here. It's going to show us our audio mixer because we control we can control the individual levels of the uh, different tracks. So I'm going to turn down our background music here. I'm going to set that down to say minus 24. And play that back, and we can see that we're getting the sound from the camera is our main source of audio, and then we have our music sort of playing in the background. So that should be pretty nice. So now we'll close that up. 
Let's say, uh, I don't know, those of you that have watched my channel, you know I have a little overlay that I put in the bottom right corner for all my videos. So let's say I want to add that. I can tap on my little three dots in the upper right corner. Whoops. And go to Import Media. And it's in my Dropbox. And I'm going to scroll down to my YouTube overlays where I've got them. And let's grab our white text overlay and press the Import button in the upper right corner. Tap on it and then drag it right down just like it was a regular clip. And then extend it to occupy the entire project here. So now I've got my video with my overlay in the bottom right corner and some music behind it. And that's the long and the short of it. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to now upload this to YouTube so that I can share it with you fine people. And to do that, I'm actually going to tap in the upper right corner. Um, and even if you, by the way, if you don't see this, if it just shows you the viewer, you can just tap on the screen and that will show and hide this little title bar here. The upper right corner, there's three buttons in that corner. The first of those buttons is a share button. So this is gonna allow me to output this file. I can either put it out as a movie, just the audio, a project archive if I wanted to back it up, or a snapshot. So I'm going to choose movie and we're going to actually put this up on YouTube. Let's tap it on this. Now I've already signed into my YouTube account here, but as usual, if you haven't signed in, it will take you through that process fairly easily. And we'll leave it at 1080 because we want to keep that nice resolution. And let's see, 360. So this, it looks like it supports 360, which is cool. I guess that's new. I haven't noticed that before. Uh, and let's see if there's any other settings I want to change here. I'm going to leave everything kind of as is. We're going to hit that right button. This also gives me the option to change the name and a description. I can also set it as private or unlisted. I'm actually going to go ahead and unlist this video because I'm going to put the link here in the video for you guys to watch uh, if you want to see what this sort of final project looks like. And uh, I guess we'll call this, uh, let's say this is travel. Where's travel? Here we go because it's from when I was traveling in the Bahamas. So we're going to say this was the video loaded from Luma Fusion. And we're going to hit that button in the upper right corner. And there it goes. So depending on the length of your video and depending on how, um, how fast your internet connection is, the actual upload speed may be different. So. I can tell you that um, longer movies will take a significantly longer time to upload, so be sure to have lots of patience. Uh, it will definitely get up there, no worries, but just uh, bear in mind it's going to take a little bit longer than it will sort of coming out of a computer. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just a limitation of uh, iOS hardware or software or anything like that, but it does take a little bit longer. Um, but not a big deal because ultimately you have a fully professional suite of uh, editing tools right available to you on your iPad or iPhone with LumaFusion from LumaTouch. So uh, I hope this was helpful and I hope uh, this answered uh, some of your questions. If you have any further questions or want to see me go into anything uh, more deeply, feel free to post a comment here and uh, let me know and I'd be happy to make another video for you. Uh, we got a little message here says our upload was complete, so now it's going to be available on YouTube. So. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate it as always. And uh, feel free to subscribe and like my videos and my content here if you like what's here. And I'll see you on the next video.